Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. There might be a little bit of noise. Um, Doug's actually putting together a truck. I'll tell you about that in a little bit here. But since he's busy, there's a professor on YouTube that's born on Doug's birthday. He's younger. They're both born on Hitler's birthday. I don't know that that's any significance, but it is a little odd that two days now, this week, this professor suggested that um, whether or not you're good speaking in public and talking about your ego or ego eccentric and what that is and um, that type of thing. Basically, what I got out of it is if you're not really good at something, you should pretty much just give it up. Nice try, but like last night, for instance, was my fourth lesson in ancient Greek, and it will probably be a year to a year and a half because I'm learning how to put the words together. I can see them and um, learning that alphabet. So I'll be back being able to decipher some things that only probably just a few over 900 people in the world can do, if even that many, by the time we're done. So nice try, doctor, but it's not going to work. I'm not going to stop. So just so you know. When I've got my mind set on something, I'm going to do it. And, you know, as far as speaking in public, I was speaking in public before this doctor was even born. I've been in a catalog doing modeling. I've modeled on stage. I've played instruments on stage and spoke publicly and taught in schools publicly. And no, no, and worked with... Uh, men and women in um, therapeutic sessions. So no, no, just back it down, Sparky. I'll do what I want when I need to do it for the people I'm talking to. And if you're not one of them, it doesn't matter. And if you are, welcome. You know, so anyway, at least a few people listen to my videos and evidently they're the people that are on the same wavelength. And if you're on my same wave, same wave length and you're interfering on my wave, you're swimming in dangerous waters. That's all I've got to say on that. So no, that isn't that odd. Second time this week, um, the video, I turned it off. It's like, uh, no, 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 forget it. You know, talk about discouraging. But then he is a narcissist. What do you expect, you know? But let me see. Um, I'm going to pull it up here. It'll take a minute. Tell you what the name of it is. He's got two different channels, too. So it's just the way he worded it, you know, that I thought was a little sus suspect. <laughs> Don't like the word sus because that does mean something else, but anyway. Come on now. Yeah, it's my computer has been acting really weird. Rebel against your ego. Really. You should work on your ego. What is it? Ideal. Your ego ideal. The way you think you should be or ought to be. Not everyone is built to socialize. See what I mean? Like what? No, I guess not everybody is. <clears throat> but not everybody's um, just stuck in one box. Some of us are like multifaceted, you know. I love to socialize, and then I don't. So am I in one camp or the other? You decide. Nah, what the? Whatever. I am, These people who 
imagine they can psychoanalyze other people. They're really wonderful. It's a nice um, study of other people's minds. <laughs> Especially when all the psychologists and psychiatrists out there, especially the major ones that have written books, have mental disorders. That's a wild skin trip or else they're on some kind of drugs. You know, not that. I mean, if you're whatever you do, drink or like I personally smoke cigarettes and I smoke herb. That's I enjoy that. So, you know, but it's just really kind of odd that that subject would be broached in one week twice. That just, um, I don't know, it's weird, you know. Coming from a narcissist, and the only reason they socialize isn't out of love for other human beings. So I have somebody telling me that really has no value in another human being, how an ideal socialized skill would be. Wow. Um, did you know that I was stopped in my class for social communications? Go check it out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> really. My kid showed up one time at, at the university, and um, my teacher was kind enough, and instead of letting them sit in, like, the commons area, or we had, like, a, it was, like, a TV lounge room and whatever, uh, cafeteria, and um, she let him come into the class and take a test on social communications. He did pretty good. He was only 11. <laughs> so that was, that was wild. I said, well, I'll be right back. I said to her, I'm going to go put John um, in the TV room. And he can come in if you want him to. And she introduced him to the class that Barb's son's going to sit in with us today, and he can take a test, and she sets the test down in front of him, and I thought, that's just wonderful. That was really cool. So, to me, it was. And just that he scored better than some of the adults was pretty cool. But then, yeah. Yeah, my kids grew up around a lot of psychology, master masons, and um, their dad's a psychological skin trip, and <laughs> I studied it. So yeah, um, they they're pretty bright all on their own too. When they're sober minded, you know, I think that we're all kind of like that. I was listening to some uh, 007 had a uh, coffee conversations today, and I knew I wanted to make a video, but he they took a break, and I went and got some music to listen to. I was listening to uh, um, Nine Inch Nails, The Hand That Feeds, then um, Pesh. Pesh Mode, Personal Jesus, and Man in a Box by Alice in Chains, <laughs> you know. So, and then I went back to listen to some more of the live stream. And then I got in the mood for what I'm going to have for supper tonight. I, I'm like, I'm going to go make some biscuits, and I did. Because I was thinking biscuits and gravy. And sometimes I'll just make like a pan of biscuits and you can cut them. It's just the same putting gravy on it. But I um, rolled them out and cut them out into biscuits and fried some uh, sausage that we can just make sausage biscuits for later just really quick. So that's what uh, I yelled out to Doug. I'm making biscuits. It's like, we got lots of sausage. I said, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. And I had made uh, 
oatmeal chocolate chip walnut bars yesterday. So they were really good. He had a couple for like a breakfast, you know, type. They're like an energy bar with real ingredients. My uh, recipe called for shortening, but I put butter in it, you know. It's really healthier than emulsified oils, you know. So, uh, yuck. No. So, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I just got in the mood for that. I don't know why. So I'm later doing my video, but that's okay because I got uh oh I I got almost caught up on my laundry from having so many wash machines we were trying to first it was our dishwasher and people had lied to us like three times that a used one was decent and the same with the washing machine like crazy and I got a great big set of front loading ones but um, we got the dryer in but the washer is huge and we need the tractor going to get that going oh so back to what Doug's doing he just um, tore the um, well the whole body is coming off of the running gear, the chassis, and the frame of a Chevy S10 pickup. And we've got a 1949 Studebaker with um, uh, custom plates and vanity plates for it. Um, so we won't have to buy it. So it'll be a, a Studebaker pickup, like a little shorty pickup. Um, so when Doug's done, that's what he's doing right now. He's actually building a truck so, with one of the bodies that I don't know. I don't think you've seen that one because that's out behind our mo motor home out there. So, one of his projects and he just got um, the chassis for it. And it's like we've got a. I think it's a 34 Willys wagon. It's a gasser um, that will only take a little bit to get it on the road. Um, a couple things that it's just going to take like one item and it's good to go. You know, that type of thing. So, yeah. He was waiting for the right um, frame to put that body on. So. Anyway, I know it looks, sometimes it looks like, you know, well, what good would that be or what is that for? Well, that's probably just $10,000, you know, that's all. You know, it's just something that we have the ability to do to turn something that looks like it's not anything into something that actually runs and it's fun. Because little shorty pickups, slight ones, well, like our um, Hot Rod Chevy, our 37, that is so fast because there's no weight on it, you know. It's truly a hot rod. It's not something, I mean, you don't want to go fast for a very long time. But just fast, right, get up and go. Or if you're doing highway miles and you want to pass or whatever, it's not a slug, you know. It just looks old, what they call a sleeper. But it's not old. Not everything in it is brand new, you know, the motor. The running gear like the tranny and you know all that so so that's what he's doing today so he's too busy to really watch me closely so he has to put out his waves so other people will try and do that but it's not and I know that sounds fantastic that sounds like oh that couldn't be real oh it's very real 
and um, yeah, okay, I could go further into that, like if you get to know me, what your life might be like if you're not strong enough to deal with that. That's where it's coming from. Really. It's not like I signed up for a life of solitude and no, I'm not going to stop socializing with the few people that I become close with. That takes a lot of arrogance for somebody that uses people to tell other people to get in check with their ego. You know? What? <laughs> you talking to yourself? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Why? Are you learning Greek this week? <laughs> your umlauts <laughs> and your iotas? <laughs> That's somewhat of a joke for little markings that some of the letters and symbols will have over them. <laughs> That's not what they're called either. Yeah, these Germans. Oh, or no, no. Hungarian. Oh, no, no, no. Russian. No, Hungarian. Czechoslovakian. Slavics. <laughs> I've got that in me too a little bit, but it's like, man. Okay, Nazis. I heard that the female part of the Spirit of God, which does come from God, it is not her, but it comes from Him, so people will debate what that actually is there's it's like holding a candle gee i got that from god you know if you carry that part you'll recognize if you don't if you, if she doesn't talk to you, you probably don't know what that is and you would debate on that because you don't listen to the feminine part you only listen to the most idiotic and forceful part of the spirit of God that is in control of this planet right now. Yeah. You don't hear that still silent voice <laughs> that you want to be silent within people. No, I'm not going to shut up and the rest of the ladies on the planet aren't going to either. So you can just go sit on with your stupid self, Nazi. Oh, so I heard that that female spirit was the only one that could stop the communists. Is that right? Yeah, maybe. To me, there's only one way to stop a communist, and that's to lock it up. I'm not into tyranny. Well, today has been a very strange day in a lot of ways. And right now it says it is 69 degrees out. Um, it kind of felt like it was going to rain this morning and then it didn't. They say more rain coming in for like the next few days. We've had um, one of the wettest summers I can remember. Although they're usually this type of humidity and moisture for for the rain is usually in April. But this is because of a La Nino year. And I, um, unless people have watched the charts for decades, I can't prove anything. So these people can just keep lying to everybody. But. Um, and then it's been some days will get really hot and others are rather cold for this part in the year. But I'm pretty sure around the end of July and August is going to be stifling hot here like it always is before fall starts coming in. So that's just the way it is around here. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, today's been really weird, kind of cold, kind of hot. Like I had the windows open and then I closed them. I just open them again. It's like, like I say, I don't know if it's hot or cold out. <laughs> so, yeah. I still can't get over that. Somebody that uses people blatantly writes a book that he's a narcissist and then tells you or I to examine our ideal ego. What's my ideal ego? Would you please tell me? Is it baking biscuits? <laughs> and staying off the internet? And not coming close to deciphering the true word. Is that what's ideal? Yeah, well, it's not going to work. <laughs> I do pretty good without knowing the language. But I'm going to do a lot better when I do. You know, it's easy to sit there and decipher something when you've got the language like Hebrew then you've got it in English and you can learn to sound out your vowels. It's a whole lot different to actually learn the alphabet of a language. Um, and and uh, Dr. Almond made a perfect point about English versus Greek. English is a word or a, a language based on words. Whereas Greek is a language based on letters, and there's more letters, and there's more symbols too, to what those and and where each thing can branch off, like male, feminine, or neuter is just freaking crazy. Um, notice it's not trans or anything; it's neutered. If you don't want to be a man, maybe maybe that's your other option. Uh, I don't know, but that don't don't beat me up. It's the Greek language. <laughs> well, so maybe that's the way they were in Rome. Yeah, a lot of them were neutered. They say it was easier for men to be in fighting mode if they weren't laying with a woman, but each other perhaps. You know, so we've heard stories like that. Um, I think if you're a misogynist, you could pretty much kill a woman without having your stuff chopped off. You know, you probably pretty much have very little respect for a woman. And that is the reason why I became a martial artist because of men like that around me that actually were doing me physical harm that I had to combat against. Oh so, yeah. So if any of you are sensitive to um, me smoking herb, time to go because I'm going to have a hit of the stuff that Doug got me called wed wedding cake. Cheers. Motor sounds pretty good. Runs good. It's gonna be a really good little truck, easy on gas. It's peppy too. That'll be good. And it won't be long that Volkswagen will be on the road, too. There's just one more, like, I think a bolt that has to go up in there. That's kind of hard to do. And Doug's back is getting better. Um, he was, did have a chiropractor um, appointment yesterday. He canceled to go cut wood because he was feeling good enough without going in. But then the guy he's cutting with, um, hurt his neck somehow, and his wife and daughter were telling him that maybe he had COVID because his body was hurting all over, and Doug was born with uh, a crooked neck, 
he was breached, came out backward, and then he was dead for a while. So he has had neck problems, and he told this guy that that will affect your whole body. And oh yeah, well, boy, when I've had my back problems, like my spinal cord, I pulled it, wasn't ever supposed to walk. The amount of pain that can be generated in your body can make you physically ill. It'll give you a fever, it'll throw off your immune system, all kinds of bad things. You could even be craving some funky food from being injured that your body needs, you know, like if it's high in niacin or whatever, you know. Just from being injured, you got to be really in tune, especially when you're trying to repair yourself, you know. So, yeah, the best thing right away is to probably rest, you know. But Doug gave him a recipe for a muscle treatment and pain, nerve ending, pain relieving thing that he does. He swears by, and it probably works, but I can't do it because you take castor oil. I'm allergic to castorines. They are poisonous, by the way. Be careful of what advice you take with that. But to put it on your skin isn't like ingesting it. Mm, somewhat, I would say. But that and mix it with cayenne pepper, ground red pepper, cayenne. And the, the it's capsaicin in there like they use in uh, muscle rubs. So between the two ingredients and... And he said, put that on there and then, like, put a covering over it and sleep like that. And that's good for, like, um, if you have osteoarthritis, uh, neuropathy, as in, like, nerve ending um, problems in your feet or any kind of nerve or muscle tissue damage type of thing. And I believe it does work, you know. Yeah. So I hope his friend tried that because it seemed to work on Doug, you know. He's supposed to be disabled. Well, he's partially. Um, he had a really bad back injury in 1987. So he had uh, some pretty injured parts in his back. We've both been really lucky with the injuries we've had that we're still, we're strong, we're tough. So nothing really keeps us down like that. Not for too long, you know. Um, perseverance. think like over on 007 this uh, person called forever love 1977 I think um, I think but forever love I think had mentioned or somebody over there had mentioned that um, the like the big thing is to uh, like push on basically yeah it is it really is Although we can jump into things too quickly sometimes and end up hurting ourselves either in the same injury or like re-injuring it because we try to push ourselves harder too quickly. I've done that many, many times. <laughs> it's like, okay, not ready to push that spot. Not quite yet, you know. They were talking about Pilates being a core exercise. Yeah, it is. I was doing that before it was even invented. I would uh, have my legs up and then come down in increments and then just hold it and then bring them back up. I do that a lot anyway. I do those kinds of things just when I feel like I need to do something, you know. 
like I'll be standing there and uh, like just stretch in a certain way or do well like today I did do my push-ups and 30 of them and um, 40 leg lifts backwards with each leg because they're bigger muscles you know and uh, yeah and then all the work I've been doing it kind of incorporates everything I do a little bit, come sit down, do a little bit more and come and sit down, you know, and that's how I pace myself. I used to try and just push myself like I used to and just do it all at once and not sit down. And I, I never even realized that in myself until my kid said something to me once, but he was sort of lazy. That's something uh, Professor Vacnum was, was uh, mentioning, was some people just aren't, he said, well, aren't built for work. I'm like, well, you know, you'd be built for work if you got off your dead ass. <laughs> None of us are built for work if you want to think of it like that, you know. And, he, and then he said, and some people are just lazy, you know. But my kid was like, Mom, would you sit on? I'm like, yeah, after a bit. And he's like, please, after a while, because I'm like going back. I was doing yard work, you know, and I I had to get it done. It's like when winter goes to set in around here, there's certain things we have to do outside, you know, or if you have a garden, you have to do things, you know. So anyway. But it was just funny when he pleased at me like that because he was feeling guilty, <laughs> you know. Probably about 11. <laughs> so, yeah, one of them lazy ones. Narcissist. Now, he's the type of narcissist that you hear of him like, in the bathroom and everything's got to be just so and his clothes have got to be just so and I mean just like and there are two different types of narcissists there's other ones that are kind of kind of like that in a weird way but then on another way, level they're more slobbish not slavic but slavic slav yeah full slavic <laughs> Boslavia, <laughs> Boslaviks. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no, that's a revolution. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they're more um, um, scruffy kind of, you know. But they're still narcissists. Excuse me. So yeah. But yeah, I do get a kick out of the ones where their clothes just have to be just so, you know. Be like, I remember like, all pinning little, little pins on lapels or making bows and ties and all this shit. Just in right, you know, whatever. <laughs> Not my thing. Kind of, kind of in a way. Yeah. In a way. Like I did finally get a, a really cool sun hat to go with my yellow sundress. And I did want a beige one. It's a little darker than beige. It's sort of tan. But it's pretty. So I can't fit it with my ponytail though. But that, that doesn't matter. Or I can make my ponytail, either put it in a braid or make it longer, then it will fit. But yeah. So yeah, I do like pretty things. It just, you know what I mean? Some people, it's like, like this is a for instance, if my kid was in there combing his hair and I must it up or something, he would flip out in every direction now my oldest one if i did that he'd he'd probably go and and 
um, mess it up worse and then just call it good or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Two different, but they're both Capricorns, you know. Not like my oldest one that snarled at, would, at me wouldn't, wouldn't get me back in a different way. Probably say something rather sly or something later, you know. That's more his style. John and B like a little say something about it. Mom, you messed my hair. Yeah, I messed your hair. Come here, I'm going to mess you real good, you little freak. You know, anyway. He's not little, he's large. <laughs> he's extra large. Both my sons are pretty big. Not big, big, but big. Muscular. Well, I'm going to get this uploaded. Just saying hi. Just letting everybody know. Um, I will be back someday. It's going to take a while because it's very complicated, but not that much. Greek, ancient Greek, and I am putting the words together, and nobody's going to stop me. And when I get it set, um, people are going to be amazed at what's really in the scriptures. Pre-Hebrew. You know, the ones that watched that, the next door neighbors that watched their bullshit when it was changed. And I'm going to prove the change. I'm going to prove the chronology of the timeline through the language. And I will do that. There's other people doing that. We're proving this shit. And that'll show who the con artists, monsters are in the world, right through language and chronology and migration. Like, I know somebody that doesn't even need, know that he's of uh, Hebrew ancestry because of how they migrated and the way he physically looks and the reason why. I'm sure his parents did not tell him the whole thing, and their parents didn't tell the next ones. But I know that's what I studied. So, okay, everybody, I appreciate you joining me. I will be back tomorrow, pretty sure. I love you all. Peace from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good night or day, wherever you're at.